Take on a sadistic games master. Will they survive? Let's find out, bitches. Others and dragons! Hi, I'm Joseph Brassi. I play the role of Bjorg Bjornsson, enthusiastic and violent barbarian. I was an author on the Mongoliad books. My novels, Skyfarer and Dragon Road, can be found uh, from Angry Robot Books and everywhere books are sold. And I am the author of such non-existent titles as Don't Touch That Dice Bag, There's Eels in It. Hey, everyone. My name is Rick Gualtieri, and I play Silas Kane, who is most certainly not the Arrow of the Gods, who actually hasn't shown up in a while. You know, maybe I have to change that at some point. But that's neither here nor there, since I am also the author of several things in real life, including Bill, the Bill of the Dead series and Tales of the Crypto Hunter. Hello, friends. My name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter, the notorious rogue. In real life, I write the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels and short stories, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. And I also write many, many, many of the uh, Books in Our Shingles series. Go get them now. Hi there, my name's Steve Weverell, and I play Brandon Fymaster, sexually attractive monk about to be destroyed by a crab. In real life, I write the Doomsayer Journeys and other books with Falstaff books. You should look them up on the World Wide Web. Hey everybody, I am Drew Hayes, author, dungeon master, pilot of the crab that's potentially about to destroy Brandon Thymaster, uh, and writer of several book series, the most relevant of which today, on this particular Wednesday as you're listening to this, is Spells, Swords, and Stealth, because number five, Noble Roots, uh, is out in print and ebook right now, right this very moment. Uh, audio folks... Sadly, uh, you will have to content yourself with another episode for now because uh, no movement on that yet, but I will let you know as soon as I have a date available. Now, when last we left our intrepid adventurers, uh, they had been fighting crabs and a uh, swarm of, uh, I don't know how, into it, fish thingies? I don't know how deep we got into the, the description, but fish thingy monsters flying through the air covers it pretty well. Um, and Fandingo, of all things, had just been whooping some ass with his, um, coins, and he finishes killing a crab, spins his hand up in a gorgeous flourish, uh, and inadvertently sends his coins skyrocketing into the ceiling, where they embed themselves and knock something loose, uh, which tumbles down and wedges itself firmly on Fandingo's head. That's right, that bucket is back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Money can't solve all your problems. Well, that, that was probably the best performance of his life. <laughs> Brandon Thymaster. I wish I could. I wish I was there to see that. Fortunately, <laughs> I'm fighting this crap. Uh, you know what? I tried to do something interesting last time, and it didn't work. Uh, give the people what they want, which is me punching this crab repeatedly. <laughs> Got to bur burn a key point. Do four unarmed strikes with flurry of blows. So, that's 25 and 11 to 27 and 11. Um, the 11s don't hit. Who gets a double 11? What kind of number is that? That is for a total of 16 bludgeoning damage. Alrighty. I like to think the other people can hear me shout, Why won't you die, crap? <laughs> it's just to spite you. They make cream for that. <laughs> All right, 16 damage, registered. Uh, would you like to make any sort of movement with your action? That seems, I don't know. I don't feel good about running away from this crab. I don't feel good about dying either. This is a real, it's a real conundrum. <laughs> it's a real crab 22. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'll just, I'll just die. All right. Resigned to his fate. 
Whereas Silas Kane, you have just been freed from the harassment of a fish monster swarm. So, you know, things are looking good for you. Yeah, they are. And uh, I think they're looking even better because I'm pretty sure from my vantage point, I can't see uh, Brandon or, or his crab. Uh, you know what? Let me grab the little ruler tool. and uh, Yeah, at most you could catch like flickers of him moving in and out of uh, combat, but that would be a good perception check to get that. I mean, you know, he's it, 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 just shadow boxing with himself. That's not particularly interesting. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I mean, he might be doing that. Just knowing that Klaus is, uh, well, Klaus, I will ready in action to uh, to open fire if I see any crabs or fish things. Wait, what the hell does that have to do with Klaus? <laughs> I am neither a crab nor a fish thing. We'll, we'll see when we get to your turn. Okay. Boy, wouldn't that be the uh, the surprise reveal that no one was expecting? <laughs> Klaus was a secret fish monster. It's just a sentient bag of fish this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> to the surprise of no one. All right, readying in action. Any movement or anything? No. Nope. Should have known that his dick having eyes was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's the D&D world. What's not weird? Those are genital warts, I swear to God. Everything is dick eyes. <laughs> oh, no. All right, Klaus. I'm just gonna give it to you, man. You uh. That doesn't look good. You see another fish monster swarm uh, emerge from uh, down there. Where a reminder, last game you did hear uh, some rocks cracking. Hmm. Can I do a perception check to see what else I hear? Uh, you know what? It's your turn. You can spend your <laughs> actions however you would like. I was not, all right. That's an action. All right. Um. Oh, a swarm of deadly fish monsters. I wonder what's behind it. <laughs> I was more interested in uh, hearing if Brandon was okay, but uh, I'm going to pretend I heard that. You'll hear me when I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I better go check out Brandon. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. All right. The Fandango should be enough to satisfy the fish monsters. Uh... Ooh. And get farther away from the fish monster. As long as you're running towards me, you're not running away from the fish monsters. It's... Uh, yeah, it's your action. All right, I will go one, two, three, and from here I should be able to see what's going on. Yes, that uh, there's no perception check required for something that obvious. Uh, you you see Brandon Thighmaster fighting a crab. Well, I've used two movements, so hey, Brandon, looks like you're in some shit. Uh, a reminder, bud, that uh, as a rogue, your bonus action can be used to let you dash. So you oh. have so far used a movement and a bonus as a oh. rogue. I he's going to use a bonus action to get out a little bag of popcorn. <laughs> oh, I would, but uh, you know what? I am not only a dashing rogue, but also a tiny bit wizard. It would make oh, sense. No way this is ending well. Oh, ooh, you know what? I have got a magic missile. Yeah, I was going to firebolt the crab, but you know what? It'd be better just to hit it. All right, I'm going to magic missile the crab for five damage. No spell resistance? No nothing? Yep, five damage. Done and done. Gotta love the efficiency of magic missile. I have to tell you, I was so sure you were about to try to sharpshoot directly through Brandon Thymaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm I thought about it. Waited out. <laughs> Brandon, like, heard Klaus arrive and instantly felt his own death and then saw an orb of magic fly by and hit the crab instead. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm more surprised about, the the crab glowing with magic damage or the fact that there's not an arrow between my shoulder blades right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorn Bjornsson, um, you saw Klaus uh, dash past you last round. That's that's all the information you have from that interaction, but he did have to run through you, so you definitely know that happened. All right, so let's see here. So is Silas moving on right now down the other uh, side, or, or did he just... Silas is sta <clears throat> standing still with his eyes looking around and an arrow uh, not, because he's basically just got a ready to action and he's looking for something to put an arrow in. Okay, Bjorg is going to make his way after Klaus. All right. Probably a good thing you don't look like a fish monster right now. Yeah, Bjorg's just going to walk up and see the dead crab and go, Oh! Is that what that was uh, about? Oh, no, not... it's not dead. 
It's, oh, it's he dealt that. five damage. Yeah, oh, apparently okay. he's touched Very it. much alive. <laughs> if anything, he's just annoyed. Oh! <laughs> I think I can get to... I think I can get to right about where I am. I don't think I can... I don't think I can get any further. All right. At least you're between Klaus and me. <laughs> yeah, I can't even can't even properly tank for you. Sorry, buddy. No, um, you are from Klaus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fine thing to say after I come to save your ass. You're right. I'm being ungrateful. Oh, that crap happens to be alive. <laughs> I'll have you know, my magic missile did maximum damage. What a euphemism for something. Shockingly, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it should be. Absolutely. Like any other time, I would a thousand percent bet it was. Hmm. Um, all right, Bjorg, did you want to use your action for anything? Uh, um, I'm going to go, seeing the crab, Bjorg is going to go around it, knowing he's probably going to, that may mean eating an op attack, but I don't know if it will. Uh, no, you've entered the uh, realm of opportunity, but okay. you have not exited. Okay, he's... You've just been circling him. Okay, yeah, he's circling around, hoping to get its attention. Hey, hey, over here, over here! Stop trying to kill my friend! Welcome to the realm of opportunity. Sounds like somebody who's about to sell real estate in the D&D universe. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to be our spinoff? It's just a bunch of people trying to make a, a living selling fantasy stuff when dragons can fly by and level a town. Well, probably. That actually could be pretty compelling. Yeah. Yeah. Bleep that whole thing. <laughs> uh, all right. So Fandingo, um, uh, with a bucket covering his head and his senses, staggers around, going from left to right, banging on, passing through uh, Silas, and moving into that magical land of just off the map. Smart. Well, there goes my plan. <laughs> Brandon Thymaster, okay. it is your turn. Right. I've already used my magical healing monistic monastic monk technique. So I'm just going to burn my final key point in punching this crab. Stick with the classics. Let's go. Four unarmed strikes. 24, 12, 13, 24. Uh, the 12 and 13 do not hit. I feel like my left is really suffering today. Okay. 13 bludgeon damage. All right. Oh, I forgot to go on the crab's turn last time. Well, you got a free round as the <laughs> crab was dazed by... I don't know. Abs. <laughs> Two muscular dudes on either side. <laughs> uh, Silas Kane. Well, since I most certainly uh, have not seen uh, have not seen anything come around the corners, I will continue to stand here and bravely, I guess, uh, protect Fandingo since he's got a roof bucket on his head. And uh, once again, I'll ready in case uh, in case any fish monsters or crabs enter into my sight. Just saw two well friends dash down the tunnel. <laughs> nothing, truly nothing important. I mean, you say that, but uh, that's a pretty relevant move he just made. Fair. Because guess what else is following down the tunnels? All right, uh, that is the point where the fish monsters uh, arrive in your view, Silas. So I'm going to pause their movements. Um, right. They still have some left, but this is when your ready to action would trigger. All right, two arrows coming in. Okay. Sweet. 24 and a 32. I am pretty darn positive that those are both going to hit. All right, for a total of 18. Um, yes, those will both hit. Okay. Uh, your arrows uh, whiz through, uh, impaling several of the fish monsters. However, as with before, you find that they are uh, somewhat less effective than you know the arrows should be. Hello. <laughs> uh, you're getting swarmed by fish monsters because, because that's I des what it does. Because I deserve it. <laughs> uh, all right. So, does a 24 hit? Oh, very much so. All right. Uh, so, 17 points of damage. Yes, I am horrifically wounded. Oh, they also have advantage on you because you don't have all your hit points. That's good to know. <laughs> good court. All right. Uh, well, Silas just uh, saved y'all from getting snuck up behind on by fish monsters. But it is the crab's turn, and I'm not forgetting to go this time. <laughs> uh, gets two attacks. So, you know what? It's gonna send one to uh, one to Brandon and one to Bjorg since Bjorg was making so much noise. Ah! All right, uh, first one we'll go. We'll just go north to south. So first one to Bjorg, uh, nineteen. That will hit. Second one to Brandon, thirteen. Thirteen doesn't hit. 
All right, so 18 damage to Bjorg. All right. And roll me an athletics check. Right. I'm just assuming that's going to be better than your acrobatics. Okay, athletics check. That's 15. Uh, that meets the escape DC, so you are not grappled by that crab claw. Aha! Uh, but you do you do take the 18 damage. Okay. Klaus, you are up, sir. All right, uh, that space, two spaces to the left of Brandon. Is that solid ground? To the left. Oh, so right by the waterfall? Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. It's a little bit obscured vision because of the um, mist, but I'm pretty sure Sharpshooter helps get around that anyway. All right, well, I'd like to move there and Sharpshooter the Crab. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that feat in general. I didn't mean you had to be Sharpshooting for it to apply. Well, I intended to do that anyway. Okay. <laughs> Just didn't want to uh, hen you in or pen you in there. All right, minus five plus ten. Here it comes. All right. Oh, ooh. All right, twenty-four. Twenty-four hits. Sweet. Nice. And that is eleven plus ten is twenty-one hit. Uh, twenty-one damage. All right. Uh, crab is still alive, but uh, that is a very significant amount of damage, sir. All right, that felt good. Klaus gets a little win. A nice shot. Indeed. Good shot, yeah. Do you not have two attacks? Uh, no, we've been through this. Uh, rogues don't get two attacks. You know, I get sneak attack from being hidden behind a boulder. I thought that was the whole point of hiding behind a boulder. I probably could have gotten sneak attack damage. But you already went, but, uh, yes, great shot, me. Probably gave your position away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll get all right. Sneak attack next time. Bjorg. All right, Bjorg's taking two attacks on the crab. Arrgh! 19 and a 26. Uh, the 19 will hit, as will the 26. Oh, Not good. Not shocking, I know. <laughs> 24 total. Wham, wham. Well, so let's see. So you deal a total of 24, uh, which weighed against the two hit points it had <laughs> after Klaus had finished uh, firing an arrow into it. Uh, this crab is goo. <laughs> <laughs> The first one killed it. The second one, Bjork turned the flat of his blade down and just smashed. Hmm. I know it was already dead, but it's the principle of the thing. <laughs> it's an excellent principle. It's good to have principles. Good. My friends are alive. I've done my job. Okay. Does anybody want to eat this crab? Uh. <laughs> it's free crab. No, free crab. All right. Uh, Bjork, would you like to uh, use any movement? Um, how big is this crab? Uh, medium size, so... Biggest person. We're going to say, like, a big dog. Medium is a large, <laughs> uh, large, like, encompassing category. Think, like, mastiff-sized, but a crab. Mastiff-sized crab, that's horrifying. Uh, Bjork will err on the side of not eating it. Uh, gonna move down the tunnel in the... Can I... Do I hear any, like, noise coming from the Silas direction? Or is the, I don't know, uh, Silas, are you making any noise? I'm, uh, well, they're I'm... devouring you? Oh yeah, you were screaming very loudly. Yes. Yeah, okay. Silas has been yelling uh, devotion to Tork. Granted, that's not that out of character. Does anybody want to eat this crap? Yes, I deserve more! <laughs> Devour my flesh! Yeah, but that usually means a specific <laughs> thing. <laughs> Alright, come on, let's go save that guy. Choke on the flesh of sin! I don't know if I want to see what's going on now. <laughs> Bjorg will make his way back down towards the... Choke on the flesh of Sid is definitely a euphemism. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds pretty straightforward. <laughs> what, what else could it be, really? Jesus. Bendingo is dealing with a bucket-related crisis. Uh, Brandon Thighmaster, you have a very dead crab in front of you. I wasn't even up here to fight crabs. I was up here to explore, and that turned out to be bullshit as well. I'm going to punch this boulder. Seeing as I know it's uh, it doesn't contain a crab. All right, uh, roll me. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna do it twice. Seventeen, seventeen. Both hit. Roll damage. That is nineteen damage. Oh wait a minute, eighteen damage. All right, from within the uh, boulder, you have excavated a crystal. Oh, I guess I'll take the crystal. All right, add it to your inventory. One boulder crystal. I don't even really want the crystal. I'm just still really disappointed about this whole waterfall not having any secrets behind it thing. Okay, one boulder. I'll follow Bjork. Hey guys, I find a crystal. Oh look, Silas is being devoured. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, Silas K. I'm gonna move this guy out of there. All right. Well, I guess I'll uh, step back so I can fire at these guys. And then uh, I will scream out. It's like you have devoured my flesh. I am a part of you now. So that means oh, you no. deserve this even more. Oh no. <laughs> 
So I will do I will do a sharpshooter, um, two arrows sharpshooter, and if any of them hit, um, I will use a second level uh, smite. All right, drop that smite. All right, so one one is a natural one, but the other is a twenty six. The twenty six will hit. So that will be twenty three from the arrow, the smite. Jesus fucking Christ, we'll do six. Uh, and what type of damage is the smite? Radiant. Radiant. Oh, excellent. You notice the radiant damage uh, gets through as you would expect. R- realize that I almost minimized that. Oh, wow, those were D8s. Yeah. That's rough. Would you like to continue moving? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, then they're pretty much gonna have to swarm you. You're the only target there. <laughs> they're on you. So... Here we go again. Here comes the bite. You are very fortunate with the uh, attack you did there. All right, uh, 13, I'm sure, misses. Yep. As the swarm loses health and members, it also loses damage. Uh-huh. That's what you get for for uh, trying to eat a, a paladin who never bathes. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Jesus. You all see the swarm, like, trying, half of it's trying to spit while the other half's trying to bite. It's like, ah. I thought you were going to say, that's the effect of losing your members. <laughs> oh, God. God damn it. Well, Klaus, speaking of members, you are up, sir. Ooh, um, I don't really know what to do here. That's, uh... All right, I can't shoot through two people, correct? I mean, technically speaking, it's allowed, but... The more the people in front of you, the more chance of something going really awry if you roll badly. I'm not going to roll badly. That never happens. All right. Uh, <laughs> sharp. I'm going to sharpshooter the fish monsters. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I guess the theory is you're, like, leaning to the side to shoot around Bjorg and Brandon, which there is a pathway on that, so it is... Technically possible. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I have to give you disadvantage for this. You know that, right? Like, this is such a narrow thing. I'm Klaus Richter. Oh, wait, hang on. What? No. Hang on one sec. Okay. Let me check. Let me check something. You must be getting sneak damage because there's no way the monster's expecting you to shoot through two of your friends. Fair enough. I will absolutely <laughs> give you the sneak attack on this one. Not just that, but, uh, you know, it is engaged with uh, an enemy, so... Okay, you know what? I'm not going to impose disadvantage because uh, part of Sharpshooter specifically says you ignore half and three-quarters cover, and I would call this situation three-quarters cover. That said, if you roll low, you are still going to hit them. <laughs> They'll be fine. Klaus Richter. But you're not at disadvantage. Klaus Richter always rolls high. Here we go. An 11. <laughs> <laughs> Be really glad you broke ten, man. Really <laughs> if we I ever... say actually to Bjorg and Brandon, be really glad he broke ten. <laughs> if we ever get a Wikipedia page, Klaus Richter always rolls high is not going to be on that page. <laughs> yeah. So let's just say that Brandon and Bjorg, you feel the air move as an arrow just cuts right by your head. What the and fuck? Slams into the wall uh, ineffectually. <laughs> I'm Great gonna, job, Matthew. All right. I'm going to pretend Bjorg. there was a moth on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bjorg can, like, see what's happening. At- yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's there's a swarm of fish monsters covering Silas 10 feet from you. Oh, okay, so do I need... Do, do I If I attack the fish monsters, do I also hit Silas? Um, That's going to depend on how you roll. It's, it's not... It is possible to hit the fish monsters, but sort of similar to Klaus's situation... It's a little bit hard to attack his square without attacking him a little bit. So, okay, you know, it's all it's all in the dice. <sighs> Bjorg is gonna walk up and just kind of be like, "Well, this may suck, my friend, but uh, gotta kill the fish monsters." Let he who is without sin swing the first blade. What? I don't, I don't understand. That. That's your words are complicated. And that's gonna be a fourteen and a twenty-nine. Uh, well, the twenty-nine will hit. Oh. Actually, so does the 14. Hey, do I also hit Silas? No, if you're meeting their AC, I can't rightly say you are hitting him as well. Okay. That's a successfully connecting. You're, you're putting your blade where you're aiming it in that situation. And cut! 
And cut! It's a 17 and a 13, so... Uh, 30. Yeah, 30. All right. As with the arrows, you see that your sword is not as effective as you might hope, but, uh, you know, 30 points of damage cut in half is still significant damage. So ah. there is... Let's just say I'm definitely rolling the smaller damage on the swarm from now on. <laughs> uh, right, unless you have any action left uh, in your turn? No, I don't think so, no. Okay. Bandingo is in Bucketville. Brandon Thymaster. Uh, yeah, I'll come and slap at Silas for a bit and help things along. <laughs> Hold still. Two unarmed strikes. Uno, dos. 17 and 28. Both hit. 15 damage. You uh, slap several of the remaining fish monsters out of the air, but there are still a few crawling about. Which brings us back to Silas Kane. Alright, step away and sharpshooter him. 15 and 23. Uh, Those will both hit. Alright, so 18 and 25. That's what, 43? 43, yep. All right. Uh, well, it had four, so cutting that in half, we have a pretty much similar crab situation. Yeah, that's a that's a super dead swarm. Like the last ones, kind of got together in the perfect angle, right as uh, Silas took his shot and just <laughs> obliterated through them and buried them into the wall. In fact, he made skewers. He straight up made monster fish skewers uh, that are now quivering in the wall. How'd you like that, chum? <laughs> 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 Uh, it's their turn, and they're dead. So <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to Klaus. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I need to do anything. I, uh, go team. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait and see what everybody else does, and uh, I'll follow. All right. Well, then, Bjorg, it is uh, you, sir. <sighs> well, fish monster's dead. Are there, were there noises of more coming, or? Uh, you can roll me a perception if you would like to. Yeah, uh, let's try do and that. Listen for more approaching monsters. Let's do the perception here. Seventeen. Oh, outstanding. Uh, no, you don't hear any approaching movements uh, outside of your own group and the roaring waterfall. All right, I suppose you better press on then. Yes, let's get out of the not water jizz room. <laughs> Ah, uh, Fandingo is off map. Brandon Thymaster. I say one sec. Now I'm gonna punch this boulder. <laughs> Two unarmed right. strikes. Sixteen, yeah, twenty-six. Blew my opportunity. I have a, I have a pick. I could have done this. Uh, okay, those will both um, hit. Twenty-five damage. Oh. Okay. So the good news here is that for once you got the trap on the crab. Oh fuck. Ugh. Bad news is you did wake up another crab that I was. Gonna let y'all slide past. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, twenty-five damage. Opening salvo upon the crap. Oh, for fuck's well, sake! There were two ways this could have gone. <laughs> Three, actually. There's also more fish monsters. Well, I've had a good way and a bad way. <laughs> All right. Uh, Silas Kane. We could just leave, you know. <laughs> uh, you know something? Why? Why would I do that when I could shoot through both of you at this crap? So I will sharpshooter this thing. You know, a trick shot through both of them, hopefully not murdering any of them. Yeah, but if so, it was the will of Torag. <laughs> or, sorry, it's a Tor. <laughs> All right. So sharpshooter one and two. 18 and 26. Uh, those both hit. 25 and 23, so I believe that's 48 damage. All right. Um, between Brandon's sneak attack and Silas's arrows, this crab is looking... Shaky. Uh, this is what you get for minding your own business, crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was taking a nap and he just got violently woken up with his home getting shattered and then two arrows digging into his flesh. Uh, Silas, did you want to move, Eddie? I'll move uh, back in case anybody to hear. All right. Swarms are dead. That brings us to the crab. Uh, and, Brandon, you're the only one in biting or in a. Uh, Snipping distance that you has... don't really have to justify its attack, Drew. It's att <laughs> it didn't ask for right. any of this. It's fine. Yeah, you 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 have assaulted it in its home, and it's it's defending itself with a seventeen and a twenty-five. Well, the twenty-five hits. All right. Well, it deals twenty-five damage. Oof. Fuck. And uh, I probably deserved it. 
please roll an athletics or an acrobatics, whichever is more favorable for you. Let's go for acrobatics. 19. You are not grappled by the claw. Excellent. That could have went a lot worse. Klaus, it is your turn, sir. All right. Sharpshooter and sneak attack. Yeah, honestly, between the frontal assault and then the two arrows, I do feel like this crab is not paying you any attention, nor is it aware of you. So I will... You're in view, but I will give you the sneak attack on this one. Well, no, I think I get a sneak attack as long as it's engaged with somebody. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I was just going for it raw. I was like, yeah, honestly, you are sneak attacking this crap. <laughs> I'm not so bold as to assume you're going to make that decision. <laughs> All right. But it is, it is warranted on multiple levels in this one. Let's see. Uh, 14. Uh, oh, wait, wait, no. wait. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I got this little glitch. All right. 19. 19 will hit. All right. Good. And that is 21 points of piercing plus... Well, 14 points, so 35 points of damage. All right, 35 points of damage. You know, only because it's you, Klaus, I think it's uh, fitting. Are you using crossbow or, no, shortbow? Uh, I think it's a crossbow, but I can check. It is shortbow. No, I was wrong. Shortbow. Uh, so what those of you in the front see is Klaus uh, sneak up behind the crab uh, with his bow drawn and press it to what you can really only say is it's a butthole um, <laughs> and fire off a shot that makes the arrow explode out of the front of the crab in a horrifying, violent fashion. It's even deader than Bjorg's crab. Uh, it had three life and cost dealt 35 damage. So <laughs> Nice one. And you've already, you've already conveniently put it on a spit. He took it rictally. Yeah. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, seafood's not gonna fuck with us again. I'm taking this crab, or maybe the entire ocean will take vengeance. That crab is completely shelled, entirely ready to go. <laughs> it's like it's been peeled from the inside out. <laughs> okay, I'm putting most of a crab in my inventory, or prepared crab. Wait, I, I have a relevant question here. Uh, are you using a bag of holding or a physical bag? Uh, I think I'm just going to sort of carry it on my back for now. Okay. I was just figuring out if anything you owned was going to be forever crab scented. <laughs> yeah, I don't want. Yeah, I don't want my bag smelling of crap. Well, bag of holding is an extra dimensional space, so like only one extra dimensional space smells of crap. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Can I take the... Oh, is this crab big enough so if, if I took the pinchers like, and, and you know separated them, could I f fit my feet in there and like make shoes out of them? Uh, let's see. <laughs> we said they were massive-sized crabs. So the pincers on that, uh, you're a medium-sized creature. I'm going to say there's at least enough material. You might have to like work them and bend them out and reinforce it, but... Conceptually, I think it it could be done. I'm gonna carry the pinchers with me, and when we get some downtime, I'm gonna make shoes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna update my inventory so it says large prepared crab minus pincers. Okay. All right. Well, Bjorg, um, you just watched a crab get destroyed in a way that is just you know gives you sympathy for it, even though you know it definitely would have killed you, but it wouldn't have done that. Probably would have killed us if we'd left it alone in its boulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that crab had the worst day. <laughs> the uh, worst six seconds, I should say, in game time. <laughs> well, I feel morally conflicted right now. Time to keep walking. And Bjorg is going to head towards the edge of the map. All right. Brandon Thymaster, you are collecting your crab on your turn. Yeah, my work here is done. All right. You have a uh, movement left after you complete that. I shall follow the uh, the troop. All right, Silas Kane. Head off map. Okay, you are heading on to the next section of the map, a mysterious and unspeakable realm that we'll probably get to shortly. Uh, Klaus, you are up, sir. I am following the crowd. I will stop behind Bjorg. All right, Bjorg is up. <laughs> I love that if Drew, we're all... Drew has given us okay. maximum opportunity to fuck with another boulder right now. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right. Just going to head off. Going to head yeah, off the map. Just 
sometimes you you guys have a a method of operating that you like to stick with. I'm just enabling the play style you enjoy. <laughs> Self destruction. Yeah, I'm walking away. I'm walking away from this one. I mean it. No more boulders for me. Brandon Thighmaster is off map, leaving just Klaus. Oh well, I will continue to follow. Car has a boulder. No, not while I'm alone. That's something to do while... <laughs> Especially while you're alive. No! <laughs> Alright, I'm heading off map. Alright. Klaus goes off map, forsaking the hunk of gem that he had totally revealed partially in an earlier game. Yeah, well, that's Klaus. <laughs> now what awaits them on this mysterious realm? All right, but before we go to the next map, uh, I think we're actually going to go ahead and call our game session there for tonight. With John not being here, I'd like to, you know, get the full party before we all start the next adventure challenge. So that like it's a constant running thing, but it's not. But you know what is a running thing? It's the live blog that Joe has been updating during this game and with every game. And in fact, he's been taking your questions, collecting them, collating them, correlating them. I'm out of C words. Uh, but anyway, he's got a bunch of questions that he's uh, we're all going to tackle in a little bit after the Discord questions. The Discord, of course, is associated with our Patreon, patreon.com slash authors and dragons. If you'd like your question put in the first queue line, the, the fancy VIP uh, ushered up to the front one, then by all means, give it a join. It's an awesome community. We love all the stuff. That the folks do. We love getting to host events for them every month. It's a great time, and you could be part of it. All right, that's enough shilling and enough vamping. So by now, Rick has certainly got our first question ready to go. Unfortunately, not because we uh, we don't have any questions tonight. Just kidding. April Fools, which is about as funny as most oh. April Fools jokes you're gonna see on the internet. Uh, you know. Oh. <laughs> anyway, now that I've gotten us in the mood. Our friend Zach of All Trades asks, given Stan's actions in The Last Salty Bastards against poor Oleg Macrosson, what is the worst thing that a character of yours has ever done? Wait a minute. I didn't snap his neck. <laughs> yeah, that was John. <laughs> you made him feel love before he died. <laughs> that was the ultimate betrayal. That's only cruel if I know he's about to get his neck stabbed, which I You were not. luring him in. Father, why? I loved you! <laughs> oh, there you be nice to an NPC, you monster. And if you don't know what we're talking about, then you should be listening to Salty Bastards. Worst thing... Um, I, I haven't played really many evil characters. That That concept doesn't appeal to me very much for, like, you know, role-playing and stuff. I think the closest I came was I, I thought it was a fun concept to have a character who had no concept of morality, um, but he did have a friend who he trusted who was lawful, who was good aligned, um, which made it this interesting dynamic of like just this guy who tried to solve every problem the most efficient way he could, and then his buddy going, no, 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 people get mad if you steal their bones. <laughs> Not those people. <laughs> well, and his dad un 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 unlike Drew, I have played in evil campaigns before. Um, probably the worst thing I did was I was playing a lawful evil monk. Um, he was horrifically injured going over waterfall and found by this kindly family of farmers and nursed back to health. And uh, as a reward for their kindness, he uh, he killed the parents, burned down the farmhouse, and then sold the children into slavery. Holy fuck. Well, yeah, that's I did say, pretty much as bad I as you can get, I think. did say it was an evil campaign. <laughs> well, it could have gone worse, I guess. Let's see here. Um, I think I've talked about the Mad Monkeys fiasco before. Um, but yeah, uh, getting a... Uh, and this was a Pathfinder game. Um, there's a spell in Pathfinder called Mad Monkeys that summons a, mad, uh, a swarm of monkeys that um, harass and nauseate the... You know, uh, harass the target and give them the nauseated condition. And uh, we figured out how to we through some basically creative rules bullshit that was probably not super rules f uh rules fidelitas or whatever we uh created a uh we created a version of the spell where essentially the monkeys would the, you know you'd cast the spell 
make it permanent, make the monkey swarm permanent, and then uh, enchant it again so that um, any time someone tried to use magic to remove the monkeys, it would cause the monkeys to duplicate. <laughs> so basically, in the location in question, they had to collect all of the monkeys by hand without magic. If you had a similar spell for typewriters, you could solve a philosophical conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that sounds like a great hook for adventurers. Like, hey, some asshole created this spell that's creating self-replicating mad monkeys, <laughs> and uh, an entire town has been lost already. <laughs> you guys have to go deal with this shit. <laughs> yeah. It was a good time. We didn't, uh, we didn't, we didn't kill anybody, but um, but we made people extremely miserable. I don't remember anything specific except for what I just did to that crab, but uh, I'd, <laughs> I'd probably have to go with indiscriminately burning shit down, which I've done plenty of. My character, uh, that is. Yeah, I don't know. Is it is it bad if you you're just kind of doing it by accident? I don't know. Probably worse. No, I'm, not, uh, or we're, I'm, I'm talking about characters I've played in the past, and th those weren't accidents. All right, okay. <laughs> when you were playing an arsonist, all right. You did yeah. some arson, okay. Uh, I don't know, I've only really played uh, properly on these games, so I haven't done anything evil, especially not convincing that NPC that he was loved before Tom <laughs> brutally snapped his neck. <laughs> that feels like maybe the kindest thing I've done. You bloody ingrates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, moving over to the, to the real world side of things. This is a two-parter uh, from Zack of All Trades and Queen Crush uh, 1227. You guys have talked a bit about beta readers on the podcast before, but how much influence do they have over the final product that comes out? And also, assuming assuming you are open to it, how does one become a beta reader for you? Uh, so as to whether or not how much it affects the final product project, it depends on what they say. Depends on what they have to say and how you know. Yeah, I I don't think I can actually make it more complex more complex than that. It really depends on what they're saying. Uh, different people have different um, phases in their process when they have beta readers as well. Like um, this came up in my Discord earlier in the week. Um, so I do my beta readers as the very very last thing. So by the time it gets to them, every major like structural continuity, et cetera, issue um, should have been caught. Uh, so generally what the feedback they give me often helps with is clarity on like, hey, this is confusing because I don't remember like this part or this phrase is, you know, not telling me what I want to know. Um, it, it helps me see points that need greater clarity, greater explanation, just spots where uh, the story stops flowing because of hiccups in the information. And they are great, by the way. A special shout out and thanks to my beta readers who are wonderful and have helped me spot a ton of shit like that. I don't give a shit what anyone has to say. I don't use them. <laughs> yeah, I don't associate with betas. I want alpha readers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of with uh, with, with uh, Joseph and that uh, a lot of it depends on what feedback I get. I mean, I've had uh, I've had I've rewritten entire plot lines because uh, it came back and I was like, and I guess a lot of it depends on how much it makes sense to me. The feedback, like, uh, it's easy to get. Well, I'll say useless feedback from beta readers where one person says I hate this chapter, the other person says I love it. In which case, then you got to kind of make a judgment call there. But uh, I have had beta readers make significant changes to books, and I've had other books that pretty much came out of beta reading relatively unscathed. I mean, as far as becoming a beta reader, at least for me, I mostly rec recruit for my group, Team Twat Waffle. Um, I use a combination for every book of people I've used before, so I know I can rely on a new eyeballs, uh, you know, to, to give them a chance, and uh, that's... Uh, typically how it how it happens um mine is a kind of a small group that formed a long time ago like back in the web serial days uh for more active uh members of my community and stuff and i only kind of so much you know time to review so much input so 
I kind of just stick with the folks who have been consistent and, you know, with me for all the years. Um, I do have like a list of folks who've reached out and expressed interest. And so if ever anyone drops off and a spot does open up, then that's where I'll move to. But um, in the, it, it's been a good few years since the last time I had to do a replacement for anybody. Uh, I guess it, I guess, I guess it, uh, it, it, I don't. I. I guess I don't have a concrete answer for that. It's um, it depends. Generally speaking, I have to know the person and trust them. All right. Bob doesn't use yeah, them. I mean, uh, Bob, Bob doesn't give a shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, what about you, Steve? What was your stance? Alpha readers on beta readers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Alpha big, only. I big forgot. Manly, hairy chinned alpha readers. Uh, <laughs> I haven't used one in a while, to be honest. Um, yeah. I normally just I make Bevan read it, and if it passes the Bevan test of alpha mild interest, pure alpha <laughs> reader. Bevan is your alpha reader. This book made me masturbate while murdering a, ra- a raccoon. <laughs> ten so, out of ten stars. So basically, hey, the answer, hey dude, I fucked is, your book for you. <laughs> the answer for Steve is be Bevan. There you go. So it's just Rick and Bevan then. <laughs> 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 so our friend Stage Mike asks or well okay your autobiography is a bestseller who plays you in the film adaptation Rick <laughs> <laughs> hello friends I don't know Rick Mayo's dead yeah get him to do it it's fine we've got technology could be anyone yeah, a hologram to do it. I would normally say Vin Diesel, but that bastard doesn't, doesn't ever speak up for us. So let's let's be honest. My autobiography is probably full of like all sorts of like you know lies to make me look cooler. So uh, we'll we'll get Jason Statham. Might as well. I'm thinking Mel Gibson. I want him to be both hated and lusted after. <laughs> um, I could pick someone. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna grab the first name that popped into my head, and I cannot explain to you why. Stanley Tucci. You know, I can kind of see it. Yeah, I like Stanley Tucci. Um, I'm going to go with Martin Freeman, because I feel like trying to cast for my height would just be <laughs> very limiting. So instead, let's go the other way and cast a short comedic actor who I very much enjoy. And that way, all the scenes in which people reference my height have an extra layer of what the fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this huge bastard. <laughs> And everyone, everyone, everyone in the film has to straight faced act as if as if he is in fact huge, even if they are looking down at him. <laughs> they have to tilt their eyes up, even if it means they can't see him. No, no, no! They get down on their knees and look up at him. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna go maybe like deep method actor, just Daniel Day Lewis, Gary Oldman, one of those people. Somebody's really I really gonna thought you were going to say Busey when you said Gary. Not <laughs> <laughs> that famous method actor. Well, he might have been doing a bit this entire time. Maybe. I mean, if you get rid <laughs> of the sense. OD, I feel like. I was like yeah. Gary Busey would just skin Steve and wear him as a suit. <laughs> that would be his makeup. Yeah, I mean, that would save a lot on the budget, too. So, yeah, Gary Busey. <laughs> Gary Busey could really just play all of us. <laughs> all of us at once. Wanted him to or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you start the film and it's just Steve Gary Busey, but then slowly the other actors start getting replaced by Gary Busey. Gary Busey does all of our lives as a one-man show. Oh my god, being John Malkovich, but with Gary Busey. <laughs> being Gary Busey, they go in the door once, they like board it up, burn the house down, <laughs> kiss on the other Endless screaming and teeth. <laughs> God, I was talking about Gary Busey today because I was talking about surviving the game, an iced tea action movie from the 90s. Why were you oh. talking about that? Because there was an iced tea uh, ad for Heart Health on the Cheerios, and all I can think of is that movie in which he gets off a treadmill, immediately lights up a cigarette, <laughs> and says, For $20, I can run to Alaska, bitch. <laughs> Did he reprise that attitude in the advert? I mean, I hope you so. You know, 
he didn't have the cigarette, but it was sort of implied in like the smile <laughs> and the sunglasses <laughs> and like the clearly like I'm here for five minutes. Get your shots. <laughs> Oh, <sighs> Gary Busey's in surviving the game, though. That's that's why that's relevant. <laughs> we should do that for at the movies. Mm. Mm. Sounds mental. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, the deadliest game, but they're hunting Ice T, and it's Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's more frightening: being hunted by Gary Busey or having to hunt Gary Busey. <laughs> God, <laughs> when you when you hunt Gary Busey, Gary Busey also hunts you. Yeah, instantly you know that's the dynamic going. <laughs> uh, predator, but it's Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could I could bankroll a whole slew of really compelling movies from this one concept. <laughs> <laughs> what question are we on? <laughs> I don't know. Something about autobiographies. All oh, right. Okay. Well, we we ended on Gary Busey. That feels like a strong. <laughs> he plays strong all. Point. He plays all of us. Yeah, the answer to everything is Gary Busey. Oh God! And it just ends with like you know with with him in six in like you know in six roles just snorting and like you know a statue of Terry Pratchett, but somehow that looks like Gary Busey. <laughs> Terry Pratchett wear or the Terry Pratchett hat on <laughs> Gary Busey in cocaine. No, <sighs> that would be a fitting end. That was a very Lynchian end to the question. I suppose we should go to the Facebook now that we've burnt this down. Absolutely, yeah. There's nothing left for us on Discord this week. Okay, let's see here. Um, All right, our friend Mark, uh, fuck you Mark, says, Each of you gets to teach one college class. What's the title? I I was actually an adjunct for eight years. (laughs) Oh no. Yeah, I taught English uh, for ten I didn't teach anyone anything. And I've got two no, kids. No, not really. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> uh, a history of dialogue. Sitcoms through the ages. How not to do it and why we did it that way. I think I'd probably teach... Uh, I don't know. I always really liked learning media, but I think if you're teaching somebody who actually wanted to learn something, it would be you know, f- quite fulfilling. But if you're teaching just average children, fuck that. Say, I, I do want to throw out here, if anyone out there runs a college, I will happily teach that course for realsies. <laughs> I mean I mean I mean if there if 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 F you Mark has given us a choice here, then I'll say, you know, the the class I'm teaching is why why pools are awful and your family are terrible people for wanting one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would teach a class on contrarianism. If you've put down to paper anything I've taught you, then you've lost, fella. That's an F. Would would half of your class be you going to other professors' classes and heckling? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Today we're gonna go. Today we're gonna, okay. Okay, class. Today we're gonna go across the hall. Uh, and we're just going to badger the other classroom. <laughs> you chose to do a course in contrarianism. I don't know why you expected me to show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I would teach English literature. Um, it would be all my books, and I would jack up the prices. <laughs> oh, so, so typical college course. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly yeah. college. I think that would work better again if you were still doing it in a foreign country. I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I, I think it'd just be funnier because they weren't sure. It's like, <laughs> is this how English is supposed to be taught with orc shitting themselves? I don't know, but I'm having a great time. Really expensive though. <laughs> let's see here Um, what's a good one alright here our friend Nelson asks what unimportant thing are you irrationally passionate about again contrarianism (laughs) I I could be irrationally passionate about anything (laughs) I mean not to retouch on my last thing but I I can talk way too much for way too long about way too many television shows. I I have absorbed an amount uh, of TV with a passion that is probably not healthy through the course of my life. Like, I was a latchkey kid. I got raised by television. It's not an uncommon story for anyone in our generation, but just 
my love for that medium has sort of persisted thoroughly enough that, you know, there's a reason I don't let myself talk about the good place anymore. <laughs> yeah, safe to say I have probably a few too many p- opinions on Transformers. Um, I'm going to be really Pacific Northwest with this and say getting the right balance of cream in my coffee. That's the thing. Things like beer and coffee and food, I'm really just too lazy to be passionate about. I'm very zen about those things. So as long as they're acceptable, then we're in the best of all po- possible worlds, and life is good. Anyway, sorry, I missed the question. Uh, it was, uh, what, what, what unimportant <clears throat> thing are you irrationally passionate about? Uh, nothing. Everything I'm passionate about is important. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> All right. Uh, our friend Michael asks, what other than uh, other than Bevan, who, uh, who will stand passed out, who drinks who under the table? And I'm just going to say everyone drinks me under the table. I think we've mentioned this before in passing, but it, it always bears worth saying. I have I have hung out with a lot of heavy drinkers in my day. I have never seen anyone casually murder a beer the way Steve does. Like, he'll just be sitting and talking, and, like, with the pass of a glass, a third of it is gone, and, like, not even a slip in the conversation. It is buttery smooth, really impressive, and my answer is Steve is going to drink us all into the table. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like um, I've I've lost my drinking mojo recently. I guess it's maybe just being old or trapped in the pandemic but very unpredictable on how much i can get away with drinking i used to be pretty solid with it but now it's like oh i've had three pints and i need to go to sleep now whereas before it's like you you only really get to that stage when you've lost track of how much you've drank but no i think i've i think i gotta stick to bevan because he's the distance runner of (laughs) casual drinking yeah i like i i made i made fondue earlier this week and i used sake because i didn't have have white wine, and by the end of like that, I was I was pretty much shit faced from eating cheese. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going. Sake cheese is what you eat after you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was What's damn the fine. Hangover on cheese, like. <laughs> well, fortunately, I don't get hangover, so uh, so like I wouldn't be able to tell you. But uh, it was damn good fondue. But afterwards, I was like, yeah. It, I, I can just see getting like stopped them stop by a cop with that one. It's like how much you been drinking? Well, a nice Gruyere and some some <laughs> some Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the holes in Swiss cheese are for? Is that where you put the booze in? I don't know. Oh, God. Not for me. <laughs> I was just imagining doing a Swiss cheese shot, just like a shot out of a block of Jarlsberg. <laughs> just turn up to a pie, walk around with a big wedge of brie just soaked in vodka. Oh, <laughs> hey guys, I, I, that's that's not that's not something that I have not seen. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna. I will just warn you guys. I picked up my wife and I picked up this one. It was uh, it was beer soaked in uh, Irish cream, and that was some nasty ass cheddar. <laughs> Oh no! Not recommended. That's that's no no. Cheddar should not be mixed with sweet things. Well, tell that to all the people who put a slice of it on fucking apple pie. I don't know what I, I, that... that is about. I don't. Oh, whoa, 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 but... wait, wait, wait. What? That... Y'all don't know that's y'all haven't ever seen that. It's, no. Uh, people put a slice of cheddar on apple pie. What the fuck is wrong with them? That annoys me so much. So if you're that bored, go join the army. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch fi- pay attention in movies you'll see it sometime <laughs> if you find yourself wanting to put cheddar on apple pie sign up to go kill people yeah, yeah it's like uh, <laughs> well, i'm bored of apple pie i'm bored of cheese now so i'm going to combine them because i'm a maniac you got yeah. too much time on your hands man <laughs> yeah, obviously human life means nothing to you at that point <laughs> oh, that's Jesus. fucking weird god i did, yeah i had no idea I yeah, knew Google th- that shit. It's a thing. I knew that. I knew that some people combine cheese with sweet things, obviously, but I had no idea about the apple pie thing, and that just seems wrong. I, I'm ever out to dinner with somebody, and they do that. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing one of those emergency call things from a date, be like, dude, you got to get me out of here. <laughs> 
All right, I got a good one. Our friend Matthew asks, uh, as the sounds of Rick cursing at his pool fill the air of Jersey, what other signs Fuck. of spring are you looking forward to? <laughs> Fuck you, Matthew. <laughs> ah, spring. Uh. Are we, all right, things, this is things we're looking forward to yeah, or things, frustrations? Things, things, things we're looking forward to, signs of spring. Gotcha. Not being cold. Mm. <laughs> no, seriously, everything, everything about spring, it just, it completely, completely turns the world on its head as soon as the sun comes out in this country. Everybody's nicer. Everybody's better looking. Beer gardens are a thing. Yeah, as soon as the clocks, our clocks go forward this coming weekend, and every time that happens, I feel slightly more alive. And it's wonderful. Uh, Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Everything about spring sucks. <laughs> I uh, I'm 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 gonna second the sun thing because again I live in the dreary Pacific Northwest and uh, we start getting sun breaks around this time of year where the rain breaks up or that we have a couple sunny days and it's man it's like it's like second life. Um, so uh, can I just say it's amazing to me that a bunch of people left England and then found somewhere exactly as miserable. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's really funny. Like, I, uh, I had a, I had a, I had some, um, some friends from uh, Finland come out here to to visit, and they basically like they got off the plane and they were like, "We're still in fucking Finland." <laughs> <laughs> There's just less snow and more rain. I'm like, oh, so Finland, but not, you know, magical. <laughs> Anyone else have anything on spring? Uh, like, like I said. No, nothing. The sun gets warm, the bugs come out, the grass starts to grow, garbage starts to smell again, uh, the pool. The pool. I, 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 yeah. This is somebody who spent six months happily ignoring the outside world. Oh, you have no idea. Like, like when it finally gets cold, that's me looking at my back door going, I don't have to deal with you again for another six months. <laughs> Well, this is the big difference between me and Rick, because I love spring. Oh, it's like a a day Rick and a night Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's not a big thing, but I'm just looking forward to it being warm enough to sit out on my back porch and kind of enjoy a little bit of outdoor space. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get out of this fucking room. How long have I been working from home now? I don't even know anymore. Yeah, time is just fucking fucking gone, man. Yeah, it's 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 bonkers, and things are things are nice enough in here that there's even hope that we might be able to do some like sword practices soon. So I'm um like, hey, I, I might be able to <laughs> fucking socialize. Ah, the sounds of spring, the screaming of the rick, the clashing of the swords. <laughs> <laughs> In stereo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you are all having a wonderful spring uh, and that you're out making the most of it, unless you're in reading a new book that you've picked up from one of the wonderful Authors and Dragons folks, or you're maybe hanging out on the Discord. But hey, even in those cases, stop, take a minute, go outside, assuming the weather's nice, and just enjoy the, the slow defeat of winter for another year. As for us, we'll be back next week with a side quest, and then again in two weeks with another episode of Authors and Dragons. Until then, bye! Bye! bye. bye. Goodbye, friends. I'm gonna go scream. <laughs> Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons! Authors and Dragons! Well, I feel morally conflicted right now.